since 30% of us are perfectionists, can you spot them by the way that they lose, use language? Neurolinguistics. Okay, so yes, you can, most certainly can. So let me give you the telltale side. Well, one, one, like a little side note here, um, is that 30% um, of us are perfectionists, but that number is much higher uh, among the gifted, uh, much higher among children of alcoholics. It's about seeking approval in childhood, and, and, and that kind of flags that on. I need to be perfect because then my alcoholic parent will approve of me and I won't get in trouble or won't be noticed. Um, and you also find that number is much higher among workaholics. And you may like not like to hear this, but it's something to reflect in, on if you are a workaholic. That is actually about attention seeking. That may, that's why you can often notice that workaholic perfectionists tend to like, like really want to say that they are perfectionists in their stories, which I find in all honesty a little exhausting. But never mind. Okay, so the reason why it's exhausting is because if you're perfectionist, you're actually highly imperfect. It's completely an illusion because while the rest of us non-perfectionists are learning and having positive thoughts and higher happiness and more flexibility and enjoying life more and actually spread around our life wheel our joy and happiness, you are trying to be perfect in one area of your life most likely. Okay, so what's one way? The easiest way linguistically to spot this is um, a perfectionist uses words like should, must, required, a lot in relation to projects, tasks, milestones, things to be done. It has to be a certain way, Those, that type of language. They tend to also use a lot of words to kind of like depreciate themselves, sort of like, I'm not this, I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. So that's another telltale sign. Third telltale sign uh, of a perfectionist is they tend to maximize their failures and minimize uh, their successes in, in the way that they use language. Uh, also, they tend to, if you non-verbally observe them, they tend to have bigger emotional state shifts or mood swings uh, when they talk about projects that have failed, uh, things like that. And, and, and lastly, a telltale tell sign of a perfectionist is that in terms of achievement and goals, which you know, achievement is part of, of well-being, um, what actually um, is completely sort of neglected or not looked at are the other you know, pillars of well-being, which is positive emotions, the right balance between positive and negative emotions, feeling of engagement and flow, uh, positive relationships, um, meaning uh, and purpose. And so it, it's very much achievement driven. So, so that's a little bit of an example. And um, just having finished um, a training here in Mexico, and if you're interested in doing an NLP training, by the way, we, we give NLP training in Mexico, in Bali, Los Angeles, Amsterdam, sometimes uh, Miami and other places. Um, I noticed that over the years training a lot of perfectionists, it, it really harms their, the way that they talk to themselves, but it also, so the relationship they have with themselves, but it also really harms the, 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 with the, the relationship that they, that they have with others, you know? So it's, it's a, the negative self-talk, but also the negative talk about and towards others are, are a really challenging thing. Comes with a lot of anxiety, by the way. So that's a little bit about perfectionism. I'm also going to write a blog post about this, so be sure to look that up on our blog. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. See you around.